Hi, welcome to 1500ESPN.com. Derek Wetmore and Judd Zulged, who needs to fix his hair. I told him before the camera turned and on. This is a nice hoodie. I'm not a Blackhawks fan. You know, Although speaking of hoodies, with the uh, weather outside, Judd, it's sunny and 50 degrees. Mm-hmm. Damn near, anyway. This might be one of the last appearances of a sweater in these videos for a long time. What happens to you when you don't wear sweaters? Well, I wear three-quarter length sweaters. And then in the do. summer, I just wear sweater vests. Which you wear to the beach? Well, I don't, yeah. I don't go to the beach very often, but when I do, I'm always oh, wearing sweater vests. I'm always at the beach. Some big Vikings news over the weekend, which is actually what we got to talk about on the video here. Uh, the mm-hmm. big na- news, I thought, personally, was the five-year extension for Everson Griffin, the 26-year-old defensive end linebacker, whatever you want to call him. Right. Uh, they obviously also brought Matt Castle back. They brought in ret- the return of Jasper Brinkley from a few years ago, mm-hmm. Marcus Sherrills. They had a busy weekend. Larry Dean? Larry Dean's back on special Can't teams. forget about Larry Dean, who was announced this morning. Uh, pretty busy weekend for the Vikings before free agency begins officially Tuesday at 3 p.m. Yep. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway out of the weekend? Like I said, mine was Griffin. Um, my biggest takeaway was the Sunday news, like you said. They bring Griffin back, reportedly five years, $42.5 million, $20 million guaranteed. No surprise, they sever ties. It sounds like both sides did too. Jared Allen won't be back. Yeah. But let's start with Friday night, the Matt Castle move. I like it. Two years, $10 million. Here's what I like about it. It sets the tone for the offseason. These guys weren't going to go out, in my opinion, and improve their quarterback situation through free agency. Mackie and I last week talked about Michael Vick. We talked about the possibility that Matt Schaub might be out there. But Matt Castle, Matt Castle's going to have some stinkers of games next season. But for the most part, he's going to be a decent bridge quarterback. I like the move. It creates stability there. Now you figure the Vikings go out maybe take a quarterback <laughs> third or fourth round in this draft. They try and develop somebody. But at least it looks like there's a game plan here. It doesn't yeah. look like complete desperation of quarterback. And remember, the rest of the offense is pretty good. Right. So if you have a quarterback who can work in North Turner's system and the offensive coordinator is going to be better, this is going to be an upgrade on Musgrave. Castle's going to have, I think, some stability going into training camp. He's going to be the guy. I like that. The Griffin move interests me uh, for this reason. It's a move that in two years we could be saying, what were they thinking? Because he stayed? Or it's a move in two years we could be saying, what did they do because he's left? It's a gamble that's probably worth taking. Everson Griffin came to this team. He was a not a top-rated prospect, but a fairly high-rated prospect in 2010. Mm-hmm. He fell to the 100th pick overall, which was second pick of the fourth round, because of maturity issues on the field, off the field. There were all type of issues with him. And the Vikings didn't know what to expect, but they said he's worth the gamble. Well, and he didn't straighten out right away. And he didn't straighten out at, in his rookie in January after his rookie season. He's arrested twice in three mm-hmm. days in Los Angeles. And then he tries to throw a Super Bowl party hmm. where he's going to have a bus go from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, and the league finally said, you can't do that. But we've all tried to do that, right? Well, mine, though, was a success. I did it. <laughs> Greyhound from here. But he appeared to grow up a little bit after that. His first year, he was pretty doughy. He looked out of shape. He appeared to lose some weight. What, eight and a half sacks two years ago? Yeah. Five sacks, is that right, this past season? I think it was five and a half. But he's a guy that you figure Mike Zimmer, Derek, looked at enough on film and said, yeah. okay, Here's a guy I can work with. And I would not expect that Everson Griffin, he might start at right end, but I don't think he's going to step in at right end and replace Jared Allen straight up. I think what we're going to see is he'll play some right end, play some interior, maybe play some left end for Brian Robinson at times, and maybe even play some linebacker. Because I think what Mike Zimmer's going to bring to this defense is looks that we haven't seen here in years and years. And so Everson Griffin, I think, intrigued the Vikings, not only because of his talent, but Mike Zimmer probably said, I can use this talent. Well, and there's the key point to me. If you're re-signing Everson Griffin in a vacuum and it's Rick Spielman evaluating based on limited playing time saying, yeah, if we extrapolate this to a full-time role, he's a highly productive player. That's fine. But I think what's intriguing about it is that you're right. Mike Zimmer got his hands on it. He's seen the tape. He knows he has a vision in his head exactly what this defense wants to be. And he thinks that certainly that kind of investment, what five years reported $42.5 million dollars, An investment like that, you have to be pretty sure that he's going to fit your system, and that's an interesting clue into what I think Mike Zimmer's defense is going to look like. Yes, and so it's not going to be – it's going to be, I think, at its base of 4-3, but, you know, we're so used to 4-3, Tampa 2, which has certain principles, and I know the Vikings played some man, things like that, but I think what you're going to see now is you're going to see 4-3, but you're going to see 3-4, and Griffin now all of a sudden can move around. And if you go out and get another right end, that mm-hmm. doesn't mean Griffin won't play. There's just right. there's a lot of things that I think Zimmer is going to incorporate defensively that make this a decent move. Speaking of going out to get another defensive end, I don't think that's an impossibility. I think they still might pursue another 
pass rusher. Ah. As free agency starts on Tuesday, Judd, yes. what's your biggest target for the Vikings? Cornerback. Cornerback with a bullet. And here's part of my philosophy. And, and uh, we You want the cornerback to have this. a bullet, or it's the most important? No, no, no. no. One well, actually, bullet. Mike Zimmer's worked with problematic players, <laughs> Pac-Man Jones. So if the quarterback has a bullet, I don't like it, but I think you can work with him. No, no big deal. But in all seriousness, and I, I said this this morning on the show with Phil, I think we need to get away from, oh my gosh, the Vikings have to get help at corner and linebacker. I think the Vikings, I think Greenway will, will rebound and have a decent season next year. Okay, I think he's a decent player. I think they need one more linebacker, a middle linebacker. Is it Jasper Brinkley? I have no idea. My inclination is Jasper Brinkley, I think, reportedly gets a one-year deal. I think he has to make the team. So if they take care, if they go out and get another middle linebacker candidate, that won't surprise me. But here's where I think they need the help. Not weak side linebacker, corner. They have Xavier Rhodes. I think they need two more. If you take a cornerback with the number eight overall pick, for instance, and you sign a free agent like our guy Alteron Werner of the Titans, you need those guys. Look at the stats now, Derek. Cornerbacks play with how much you're in a nickel defense in passing situations, especially in a division where you have Aaron Rodgers, uh, Stafford, and Cutler. Mm -hmm. You are a nickel all the time. I think it's more important to have three good cornerbacks than to have three really good linebackers. I think you need two linebackers and three corners, and so the Vikings cannot have enough depth at that position. I think Mike Zimmer's big point with the press meeting a week ago, uh, what Andrew Kramer and I attended. I wish I could have gone. Yeah, but you know you don't get the invite. Nobody really likes you. Why am I not um, liked? Look in the mirror, Judd. The Blackhawks. The Boy. the large point was that he you yeah. know he he says he'd rather buy a Ford F one fifty than a Maserati. I kind of joke that I'd personally rather have a Maserati. It's a quick fix, but fine. It's a sweet car. Uh, his point is that he doesn't want to overspend in free agency so that you regret a contract in three years and it's weighing you down and it becomes right. a burden or an albatross. Right. I think they're going to try to play it close to the vest. I, I don't know if they're going to go out and spend big money, but I think the Everson Griffin money is a big clue to that. Okay, but Zimmer says that last week. And then they go Griffin gets this contract. Sure. What's your take on it? This well, is this is really this is an interesting gamble. I don't blame the Vikings for saying to themselves, "We don't want to in two years say what were we doing mm -hmm. by allowing Griffin to walk out the door." But let's be honest, there's no guarantee here either. Well, there's not this is not obtaining Jared Allen right. in 2008, knowing we're getting an elite player. Griffin is younger; he's 26, and mm -hmm. I think you're willing to gamble on the prime years of an athlete's career. Where I worry about in free agency, whether it's football, National Hockey League, basketball, or baseball, is paying for past production. You sign a free agent yes, when he's 35, he's had a great career, and yep. you give him a two- or three-year contract in his lesser productive years. I think if they're going to go spend big money, it's going to be on a younger player like an Everson Griffin. Just real quick, the undoing of the Vikings in the late 90s was exactly that. They had all these guys that helped them, mm -hmm. and they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you one last real nice contract. And yet a bunch of players who were over the hill and couldn't produce. You're exactly right. In this salary cap age, the dumbest thing that you can do, and the Vikings don't do this now, is to say, thanks a lot, here's the last contract. Kevin Williams, prime example. If you went to Kevin Williams and said, Kevin, you've been great for us, you are a, a player whose number we might retire, here's one last big contract, on the surface that's really nice, and it's the dumbest mistake you can make. Disagree with you there, Judd. I think Kevin Williams might make a no nice nose tackle Pam, if he's Pam willing lot, to move though. over. Got to go for cheap, though. Get him on the cheap, and if he'll play nose, he's a great player and bound for the Hall of Fame. Disagree with you. It's not a nose tackle. That'll do it for our video. Probably already too long, but lots of Vikings free agency long. stuff to get to. Uh, it's violated again. every tenant of video I know. Free agency opens Tuesday at 3 p.m. Uh, the Vikings, maybe they'll be active, maybe they won't. They had an active weekend, and we'll see how they build the rest of the team through free agency and then the draft in May. Sounds exciting. We'll be here to cover it at 1500ESPN.com. Be sure to keep checking back to the website. For Judd Zolgad, I'm Derek Wetmore.